I'm going to walk through how I build responsive components in Figma. Uh, there's a few kind of key steps that I take that I do on pretty much every component I build, and it is the core of how you build a responsive component. Works on mobile, works on desktop, and all of the uh, sizes in between. Uh, here's an example. Pull it in here, and I can, you know, from a wide uh, desktop version down to a mobile version uh, it's one single component and um, and again the benefit here is yeah I, I don't have to manage uh, multiple sets of components or variants of for tablet and desktop and mobile it's just a component um, it follows flexbox or auto layout which is uh, auto layouts a, a designer friendly version of a designer friendly uh, interpretation of flexbox they're the same thing but um, in fact, all of this gets exported out to, if you go to dev mode, uh, gets exported out to code, um, to Flexbox code. So uh, yeah, so this is kind of what we're doing here. Um, and it's basically, they, these all do that. And I'll walk through these. This is a simple example, but I'll walk through a little more complex examples uh, in, in a second. Um, it really comes down to two things, um, outer container and inner content container. Um, so if I bring this down here and I bring this down here, change that. Um, so really this outer container, uh, well, first off, let me show you this. So if I have a box here, now what I'm trying to do is set an inner or a minimum maximum width on this outer container. Now I can't do that here because um, it's just a rectangle. So even if I make it a group here, it still doesn't give me the option. So what I have to do first is shift A and add auto layout to it. Once auto layout's in there, I can now add a minimum width of whatever, and then I can add a, um, <clears throat> sorry, I can add a maximum width of here. And now I can, um, what's going on there? Oh, here. So now I can do this, I can set this, and I can um, shrink that back and forth. And then the box inside is set to fill. Um, this is set to fill um, you know, my, my, my outer container. Uh, so, sorry, let's ignore that. But yeah, so here, here we go. So here's our outer, oops. Here's our outer container, and I've just set that minimum, set the maximum, right? So that's all I'm doing here. And what I do is I set a minimum width of what that would look like on mobile and then a maximum width for something larger than what I want on desktop, which means if my content is 1160 or 1240 or whatever I want that, I want something a little bigger so that I can um, show what that looks like with the wider, um, you know, the wider, wider uh, edges. And um, yeah, so that's what I have there. And then on my content, have this content container and that only has a maximum width so here i want this maximum width of 960 and that's kind of where that's what my like grid my responsive grid is based on and everything like that um and i want that to max out right so if i if, if this is going on some designer's huge monitor i you know that that's um let's say uh let's say I go to max width and i want this to be 2440 or something right um well, now, you know, I don't, I don't want the content to go to stretch out to all this to be one line, right? So if I drop this in here um, and I take away this maximum width and I do fill, I, I don't want that on some, you know, designer screen, right? So that's why I'm giving this limit um, here. And so this one, again, has a minimum maximum width. And this one just has the maximum width. Um, and yeah, so that's, so then I basically take this, copy this, put this in inside my outer component. Um, sorry for the colors there, but then now these are identical. And so then I can shrink that, grow that, same thing here. Um, and that's basically it, it's basically those two steps. Uh, and if I come down here to a more complex one, um, this one, let's see, 
in here has a content container and a top content and a con this th I, I needed these to sack and that's totally still follows the same thing i just put a max width on this container and this container now i could have put both of those in one but I, anyway this is just what i did um, but it's the same thing as these go now these stack um, what I do have here is uh, these cards have a minimum and maximum. I want them to fill, but I just I didn't want a lot of variance, and so that's what these cards all do. Um, but they're set to fill and wrap, and so sure enough, this does exactly what I wanted to do. Um, now note here that on the the padding, on the outer container I have padding, and then on the inner. Uh, oh, inner container I also have padding now these you kind of can do different things with notice this goes all the way to the edge this photo and I don't want that right so that's why in here I can just say hey on the outer one I want or uh, yeah on the outer one I want 16 let's say well now they all are taken care of because that outer container has the padding sometimes you want that on the I generally will put that on the content containers but in this case where there's two of them uh, it's uh, again it's, it's easier to put on the outer one um, but you can talk to your developers about that too about what what they want and what they prefer um, here's another one I'll go back to that smaller one here in a second um, same thing right so I have these components that this one I can turn things on and off I can turn on that answer um, but it works the same way you shrink down um, you know in this case I wanted the um, I have I have uh, a space here because I want I wanted this line to, to, to have a little bit of padding. I don't know if you can see that or not, but then I also have um, on the content I have I have 16. Um, again, I could have put that. You know, it, it, they're interchangeable, but um, but really then that that outer one I want the um, content to hug so that if as it changes size vertically. It will hug, um, it, you know, the, the whole window will adapt to that. Um, but yeah, so there's that one. And then lastly, um, so I have this kind of component here, right? That's like a floating kind of center component. And let's say it has a drop shadow on it that's um, do something like that. Oh, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. It's on the outer one. Um, here, this content, right? So I'll do this. Um, drop shadow whatever um, and then 12 okay so there's that same thing here right so as I scale this down this works but all I'm doing here is I have a much smaller uh, maximum width and it's centered right um, sorry it's centered here so I center that I still have my minimum and maximum. My content container then has a much smaller uh, max width. Now, when I shrink this down, here's where I have zero padding on my outer container and 64 on my inner, which is here. This is a case where I don't want to mess with that. And I, I don't want that to go all the way to the edge, especially because I have this drop shadow and everything. So I can say, well, that's, that's too big, but I'll, I'll do this. Um, and now I have, I can still see that shadow, everything kind of fits. Now this doesn't fit, so I'd have to um, add a, change that minimum width to 300, let's say, and now it fits. Um, and same thing, I can scale that back out and everything works as expected. So again, very common. You see the outer container that I set that minimum and maximum width and then the inner content to, I set the, I, I, the maximum with where, where I want that to, to stop. Um, and that can change that if, if I'm floating something or if I want these to be lined up here. So, uh, so that's it. And uh, yeah, talk to your developers about where this minimum and maximum come from. You can talk to the product, product manager on, on um, or the, the you know, producer, whoever's in charge of, basically you go into Google Analytics, find out what those you know, users are, uh, what you're targeting. And then you can come in and, and do stuff. Now, lastly, I'll say like, if you're like, oh, actually on this one, I want, um, as this shrinks, I want this logo to come to the bottom. And then as it's smaller, I want it on side by side. This doesn't really apply to that kind of mentality. 
But it's also like, do you really want to spend that much effort on your quote component, for example? Is it go spend it on the header, go spend it on the cool nav or something else. Um, generally, these are kind of utilitarian components. You don't necessarily want to go overboard on, on and this gets subjective, this is just my opinion, but um, I recommend this to all my clients, like build a quote component, build something kind of more you know straightforward uh, functionality wise. And the other thing is, Everyone was kind of going, oh, mobile first. That was a big thing like 10 years ago. Now people are like, oh, yeah, people just want their mobile devices to play Farmville and Bejeweled and TikTok videos uh, doing work and going to your marketing website or whatever or even your your, your software application on the web. It, people just don't do it as much in general um, on mobile, and it generally goes to desktop. At least that's what I found with all of my clients. But, um, and that could be different in your world, but um, again, generally it, it, the value, uh, you know, the, versus the, the effort put into a fully custom tablet version, then a further fully custom mobile version is generally not worth the payoff. But um, anyway, that's, that's up to you. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's what I have here. And it's, it's uh, been super helpful and valuable and uh, clients love it, developers love it. and. Uh, uh, designers that can kind of get their heads around this are, um, you know, really uh, a much more important asset to the team.